Hey everyone, it's Elisa with another step two question for you. Feel free to pause right here, read it, and answer it on your own, and I'm gonna get started. So a 35-year-old man comes to the ER because of a three-month history of intermittent abdominal pain associated with diarrhea, bloating, and mild nausea. During this period, he's had an 11-pound weight loss. He feels like he cannot fully empty his bowels. He consumes a high-fiber diet. On physical exam, temperature is 98.5 Fahrenheit, pulse is 90, and blood pressure is 130 over 90. Pulmonary and cardiac exams are totally normal. Abdominal exam shows mild tenderness to palpation in the right lower quadrant without guarding a rebound. Bowel sounds are normal. Rectal exam is normal. Stool occult blood test is negative. His hemoglobin is 11. White blood cells are 12. And ESR is 131. A barium enema shows ulceration and narrowing of the right colon. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So we have diverticulitis, UC, Crohn's, IBS, carcinoid tumor, and celiac disease. So these are all very good options. So let's start with highlighting what we think is important. So he's 35, he's pretty young. He comes to the ER and he's had this three month history of abdominal pain with diarrhea, bloating, and nausea. He's also lost quite a bit of weight. Um, he consumes a high fiber diet, which is great. Um, his vitals are pretty good, nothing unremarkable. I mean, nothing remarkable. Um, pulmonary and cardiac exams are normal. Abdominal exam is the thing that we have to pay attention to here. Um, so he has tenderness to palpation on the right side, right? What's classically on the right side? The appendix. This is not an appendicitis. It's also not an option choice. That's a good thing for your exam. If you think it's something and it's not an answer, cool. You're done. Uh, bowel sounds are normal. Rectal is normal. No blood in the stool, which is very important. Um, his hemoglobin is relatively low, but also his ESR is high, and that's important. And then finally, the most important thing is that a barium enema shows ulceration and narrowing of the right colon. That's extremely important. That's going to be the thing that uh, makes or breaks a lot of these answer choices. So, now that we have Vignet and we kind of analyzed it, let's look at the answer choices. So option number one is diverticulitis. Um, diverticulitis is common uh, in general, but it's especially common in people who eat not a lot of fiber uh, and always strain with their stools. This is a young guy who eats a lot of fiber. Um, and then the other thing is diverticulitis affects the left lower quadrant more often than the right lower quadrant. And it's certainly not going to come up with a stricture. So if you look very, really, really imagine here, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can see little outpouchings right here, right here. Those are diverticula. So uh, first of all, this patient doesn't have diverticulitis because he doesn't have, uh, you know, a fever. He doesn't have any peritoneal symptoms. Um, and definitely no structure, no findings on barium enema. And he has the borderline high normal uh, white blood cells. So it's likely not diverticulitis. The next option is celiac disease, which is not a bad option. However, the barium enema um, pretty much rules this out uh, because celiac disease won't really have gross findings. The next option is carcinoid. So uh, metastatic intestinal carcinoid tumors will cause abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss. However, you'll also see extra intestinal symptoms um, due to the high levels of serotonin. So you're gonna see cutaneous flushing, you're gonna see wheezing, you're gonna see redness. Um, and it's often located in the small bowel, not in the colon. And again, you wouldn't see findings on barium enema because the enema won't reach the small intestine. The next option is IBS. So IBS is classically a young woman who has alternating constipation and diarrhea, maybe some tenesmus as he has, but um, definitely not as severe. It's worse with stress. Uh, usually there's no weight loss or weight gain necessarily. Uh, you would also not see any findings on barium enema, so we can pretty much cross out IBS. The next option is IBD. Now IBD has elevated inflammatory markers, anemia, 
possibly because of the inflammatory markers, possibly because of the disease itself. Um, you may or may not see blood in the stool, depending on what kind of IBD it is. Most importantly, it has exactly what this patient has, which is tenesmus, diarrhea, and weight loss. So he might have IBD. Uh, however, we have two IBD answer choices. We have ulcerative colitis and we have Crohn's disease. So which one do we think it is? Well, it's probably not ulcerative colitis. There's no blood. And most importantly, ulcerative colitis uh, is contiguous and spreads proximally from the rectum. And because there's no involvement of the rectum, the involvement is on the right side of the colon, it's probably not UC. As a general reminder, I wanna go over the differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Both of them have crampy diarrhea, abdominal pain, weight loss, um, some fecal urgency. Both would likely have tenesmus. However, Crohn's disease has strictures, which lead to obstructive symptoms. Uh, Crohn's disease also forms fistulas, so something like you know, a recto-vesical fistula or a recto-vaginal fistula. Um, is a big red flag for Crohn's disease. It causes recurrent UTIs, abscesses, pneumaturia. And then another thing is Crohn's disease has skip lesions. So exactly like this patient has involvement of the right colon, um, you know, essentially it skipped the entire GI tract and went straight to the right colon. There's also transmucosal inflammation. All um, of the mucosa is inflamed. Small bowel can also be affected versus an ulcerative colitis. Most likely it's, you know, the small bowel won't be affected, but the rectum will always be involved and it's gonna extend proximally in a continuous fashion. There's also gonna be just superficial mucosal inflammation. Again, in Crohn's, probably no blood. In ulcerative colitis, very, very likely to have blood. But don't let this be the thing that strays makes you choose Crohn's versus ulcerative colitis because this patient might just not have blood at that time. And then extra intestinal manifestations um, are similar, but just a reminder, uveitis, episcleritis, erythema nodosum is very much a board favorite. Uh, Pyoderma gangrenosum, maybe you'll get a picture of that. Um, arthritis, ankylosing splendinitis, uh, thromboembolism, and then sclerosing cholangitis are all things that can happen with irritable bowel disease. So um, let's go back to our options. Let's cross out what we know it's not, what we know the answer isn't. So it's not diverticulitis. It's definitely not IBS. It's not carcinoid tumor. It's not celiac disease. So. We know it's not ulcerative colitis, although that's a great option. So the answer is Crohn's disease. All right, thank you so much. I hope you liked that question. Uh, IBD is very high yield for the step exams. Um, we will see you next week.